Joan Scow. We're all gathered here on this kind of gloomy day. I am the Reverend Gail Wright, and I feel deeply blessed to be leading this service of celebration, remembrance, and farewell. Joan loved her family and loved being involved with good work and with people. All that love is represented by the people from so many parts of her life who now mourn her death. Today, from the many places we knew Joan, we all gather in the protective shelter of God's healing love. Here we are free to pour out our grief, release our anger, face our emptiness, and know that God cares. We gather here as God's people, conscious of others who have died and the frailty of our own existence on earth. We come to comfort and support one another in our common loss. We gather to hear God's words of hope that can drive away our despair and move us to offer God praise. We gather to commend to God with thanksgiving the life of Joan Scow as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection. For whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Christ, Christ who is Lord both of the dead and the living. Hear the promises of God as Joan knows, knew them. Jesus said, <clears throat> Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Let us now rise in body or in spirit and sing hymn number 628, Precious Lord.
Let us all pray together. Holy God, whose ways are not our ways and whose thoughts are not our thoughts, grant that your Holy Spirit may intercede for us with sighs too deep for human words. Heal our wounded hearts made heavy by our sorrow. Through the veil of our tears and the silence of our emptiness, assure us again that ear has not heard, nor eye seen, nor human imagination envisioned what you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. Hear these words from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture passage you just heard was chosen by Joan, as are all of the hymns you will hear today. Soon you will hear words of remembrance from her family, her family who Joan dearly loved, especially her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I have been blessed this past week to have heard many remembrances from her family and also from her many MCC friends. Often, people have used the word sweet to describe Joan, and that is certainly a tribute to the way she interacted with the world. However, these scripture passages and the hymns that Joan chose demonstrate that whatever Joan was like on the outside, at her core, she possessed deep strength, deep strength powered by a deep faith. Pastor Tom was very sad that his vacation plans prevented him from being here today, but I want to share something <clears throat> that he told me. When he visited Joan after her cancer diagnosis, he assumed she would need words of, of comfort and support. I actually believe she comforted him um, because what he heard was that she was sustained by her, that, that she was prepared, that her time on earth was coming to an end. Um, and she was sustained by her deep belief that her time with God and Jesus would continue just in a new way. Her faith in that mystery carried her through her diagnosis and her final months and into God's arms. Her only distress was that those she loved, especially her beloved family, would be sad. We will now have the opportunity to hear from her family, starting with her eldest son. On behalf of our families, Doug's, Paul's, and myself, 
We thank you for your genuine heartfelt thoughts, prayers, and support. Mom relished her time with eight grandchildren and their spouses and fiancés and four great-grandchildren. Her home and arms were always welcoming. She loved having gatherings. The more chaotic, the better. We celebrated many Easter's, Thanksgiving, Christmas holidays at Grandma Central, as well as many post-holiday open houses with aunts, uncles, and cousins. Joan loved all the gatherings with her extended families of the Scows, the McWilliams, the Callahans, the Sobolewskis, the Cornells, the Stones, Joan's cousin Barbara, and the Foley's, and family friends of the Alexanders, Louise, a lifelong friend, the Butts, one of Joan's closest friends, Sue, and the McCabe's, lifelong friends, and the Culbergs, summer reunions at but Little Buttermilk Bay in Bourne, and so many others. Joan has quilted herself a patchwork of interweaving circles of family and friends. Some have passed, and some are present. Some are near, and some are afar. Some are new, and some are lifelong. Regardless of when or where, it's all of you. She wrapped herself in this quilt, feeling its hugging comfort, tending to its stitches, and always adding to it. The quilt pattern comes from her shared connections with all of you. You brought her joy and happiness with meeting for walks and dog walks, connecting on social media, exercise classes, high school reunions, and monthly lunches with high school friends, a traditional New Year's Eve celebration of an early movie and dinner with a very close friend. The Framingham Animal Hospital Group, Purses Gang, celebrations of birthdays, Red Sox games, Patriots games, and St. Patrick's Day with their Joni. Church holiday fairs and events, activities with the Sudbury Militia and the Women's Fellowship Group, and the volunteering with the Sudbury Historic Society, the Sudbury Food Pantry, and Rosie's Place in Boston. Joan also loved her pod companions over the years, Dixie, Tigger, Champ, Sassy, and Dudley. Dudley now resides with Joan's youngest son, Paul. Each of us played a vital role in the stitching of Joan's quilt, adding color and hues, joy and comfort, and a belonging to a rich and vibrant life. We are so grateful for being able to celebrate Joan's life with all of you, and are honored to have such rich memories to carry us forward within our hearts. We are forever grateful to the entire staff and volunteers of the Rose Monahan Hospice Home in Worcester for their compassion, care, and friendship, and Jones Memorial Congregational Church family for their support and the outreach to us in the planning of today's services and gathering. We also want to acknowledge and thank Joan's grandsons, Jared, who's being deployed Sunday with the National Guard to the Middle East, and Joseph, who's in the Army but unable to attend today, but was able to visit his nunny this past summer. Thank you to all of Joan's grandchildren, along with their spouses and fiancés and great-grandchildren, for sharing their love, their help with the moving, creating the picture boards that are here today, and the participation in today's celebration. On a personal note, I thank my wife Donna for being by my side. And give me strength. And our daughter Sarah for her support and advice. And my brothers Paul and Doug for being here and being such great brothers. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Joan. May peace be with you. And now we'll hear from Abby Scout, the youngest grandchild. <laughs> oh. Just one second, sorry. Joan Scow went by many names, whether it was mom, grandma, nanny, Gigi, and Joni, which is new to a lot of us. And there's more that I probably don't know of, but all very sweet 
per who Nanny was. But what I do know is to know the exceptional woman I called Nanny was to be loved. Those who cross paths with Nanny would tell you how wonderful of a person she was and how she would light up a room every time she was present in it. Nanny always had a calm presence to her, one that was welcoming that you just had to sit down and talk with her about anything and she'd be happy to listen to whatever you had to say. This was a woman who thought highly of everyone with her best intention. And she believed in all of us more so than we could believe in ourselves sometimes. Constantly in our corner cheering us on through any challenge that was brought our way. Constantly reassuring all of us when our own doubts set in, offering what some of us would call the best advice in any of our lifetimes. And I know I can say that for certain, as I have carried a piece of her advice for 10-ish years. That advice given to me when I was nine, because I was so anxious about the next day. For whatever reason, I can't tell you. Probably something dumb. But Nanny didn't care. She always listened. And per usual, I was keeping my poor cousin Maeve up, and my grandmother brought me downstairs and gave me a snack. And we talked about what was keeping me up. And she told me, when you close your eyes and go to sleep, you picture a place that makes you happy, and we can deal with what's keeping you up tomorrow. So what place makes you the happiest when you think of it? And I told her, the beach with my family is a place I'm always happy at. And since that night, I have replayed that conversation in my head when I am stressed and unable to sleep. And now going forward, I will picture you walking me down the shoreline of that beach picking up shells together like we used to. Because some of my best moments are on the beach with you. Thank you for everything, Nanny. And we miss you already. We love you tons and bunches. And we know you will be watching over us and still cheering us on. Thank you, Abby, and Ken, of course. As you've heard, Joan was first, last, and forever a mom and a grandmother. But she also, as you also heard, in her quiet way, was a friend and important contributor to many, many good endeavors here at this church and all around Sudbury. She didn't want to be a leader. She was very clear about that. But she was that most essential person, a good, hard, and loyal worker for a good cause. Joan didn't just have faith. She lived it out by doing good. For the past week, I have been hearing about all the holes Joan's absence has left in the fabric of so many institutions. The senior center misses her quiet ability to mix and bring people together. Our Silver Bell Fair people miss her artistic and craft-making abilities. The Historical Society misses her consistent work on projects. And of course, her friends, and she clearly had many, miss her joy, kindness, and intelligence. I am sure that many of you have good memories of and stories about Joan that you treasure. My hope is that as we gather later for the reception, you will share those memories and stories with each other and with her family. In a minute, you will hear her granddaughter, Jennifer, read a poem that Joan picked. It reflects Joan's deep love for all of her family and friends, her deep belief that she is still present and will remain present in some way, and her concern that we all not be weighed down by grief. Well, I'm sorry, Joan, but we do and will feel grief. 
However, my suggestion is that we honor that grief in a particular way in the coming weeks, months, years, as we remember Joan, take a moment to share those memories with Joan's loved ones, her friends, but especially her family. Use actual cards and letters or phone calls, but also emails, texts, Snapchats, whatever works. Um, those communications will remind all of us what Joan wanted us to take from this poem. And now, Jennifer. I'm officially the oldest and shortest grandchild at this point. <laughs> um, sorry. Before grandma's passing, she had found a poem that she really liked and resonated with. She shared this poem with our cousin Sarah during one of their visits, and we would like to share it now with all of her family and friends as a special message as to how she would like to be remembered. Remember me. Don't remember me with sadness. Don't remember me with tears. Remember all the laughter we've shared throughout the years. Now I am contented that my life, it was worthwhile. Knowing that I passed along the way, I made somebody smile. When you are walking down the street and you've got me on your mind, I'm walking in your footsteps, only half a step behind. So please, don't be unhappy. Just because I'm out of sight, remember that I'm with you each morning, noon, and night. We love you, Grandma. Memories of your laughter, your wisdom, your patience, your honesty, and your unsurmountable love will be forever in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you. 
And now we will hear Sarah, another grandchild, read the 23rd Psalm, which is what that hymn was based on. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. My rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let us be in prayer. God of grace and love, fountain of compassion, and giver of all comfort, support us as we mourn. We praise you for your steadfast love for Joan all the days of her earthly life. Help us lean on you, God, and know your consolation and love. We thank you for Joan and for all the years on earth we shared with her. We thank you for all the ways she touched our lives, for her great love to her family and friends, for the ways her humble and faithful service made the world better, for her joy and laughter, for her support and care, and for the good times she created and the good memories she grew. With faith in your great mercy and wisdom, Lord, we entrust Joan to your eternal care. Loving God, we thank you that for Joan, all sickness, pain, and struggle, and sorrow are now ended, and death itself is past, and that she has entered the home where all your people gather in peace. Give us the strength, Lord, to trust that she now lives with you and is in your loving care forever, trusting in your promise of eternal life through our Savior, Jesus Christ. God of all mercies and all comfort, in tender love and compassion, embrace us, your sorrowing servants, Joan's loved ones, be their refuge and strength. Show them again the love of Christ that passes all human understanding. For by death, Christ has conquered death. By rising, Christ has opened to all of us the gates of everlasting life. And in the words of Jesus Christ, let us pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. And it is not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Into your hands, loving Savior, we commend your servant Joan. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a daughter of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace. Amen. Holy One, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled 
mine own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. After the final hymn and the benediction, the family invites everyone up to Ames Hall for a reception. The family's hope is that there you will have some refreshments and also share remembrances of your relationships and your times with Joan, with her family, and with each other. There will be people at the door pointing the way, especially for those who would find stairs a problem. Now let us all rise in body or in spirit to sing the final hymn. Thine is the glory. Merciful God, 
support us all the day long of this life full of trouble until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes <clears throat> and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your tender mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. And now, go forth into the world with peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Love and serve. Rejoice in the power of the Spirit and the blessings of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Comforter, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.